didn't want to get back to that stingy defense they had during the winning streak. Set to get underway. Jamie Lucky, Matt Potter, Tony Chiazza, our officials here in Charlottesville. And we are underway as North Carolina wins the opening tip. Number 10 in the country coming in. They've been a very good road team, too. The 6-2 and two on the road in conference play. R.J. Davis gets the first crack at it, but off target. The rebound is picked off by Ryan Dunn, who just might wind up winning the Defensive Player of the Year, but he's got great competition on his own team with Reese Beekman. He absolutely does that, and Ryan Dunn, who leads the ACC in blocks, of course, Reese Beekman in steals, so both those guys have the characteristics to get it done as ACC Player of the Year. Beekman trying to penetrate and pop and hits the first bucket of the afternoon. I love the aggressive movement by Reese Beekman to get into the painted area using his size over R.J. Davis. That's something that Virginia's guards with that size advantage can do. Baycott out of the double. Ingram will slither in and hit that shot. Nice give there from Baycott. And OB, you've got to consider the fact that not only is this Armando Baycott's fifth year, but this is about the 10th or 11th time he's played against Virginia. So he's very aware of that post trap in North Carolina prepared on that first possession. He's had a lot of injuries when he's taken on Virginia. He had one monster game where he had 29 and 22. Yeah, big performance, but of course, this is a school, and we'll talk more about it, that Armando Baycott absolutely considered when he came out of high school. Dunn makes a strong move, can't finish it. That's a problem for him. Not a lot of offense, despite all the great defense. Could owe the kick here. Cormac Ryan will finish that with a triple from the corner. Cormac Ryan has hit four three-pointers in the last two games, respectively, shooting the basketball extremely well, 50% over those last two games from beyond the arc. Beekman will back it away. Virginia 14-1 and one at John Paul Jones Arena. And he'll get two more. He's off to a quick four-point start. But that's it. Once again, Reese Beekman using his size over R.J. Davis, just getting into the painted area and using that six-foot-three frame to shoot over the top of the smaller Davis. Elliot Cadell, the freshman point guard, looking in. Baycott trying to get clear. He'll spin to the baseline. And a shove as he's fouled right there on the baseline with eight on the shot clock. And a foul by Jordan Miner. A great battle between the two best from the guard position in the ACC. Reese Beekman attacking R.J. Davis off the bounce. Doesn't beat him initially, but backs him down using that size to score over the top. We can expect to see a lot of that from Reese Beekman throughout this game. Ryan off the inbounds. Big rebound by Baycott and a monstrous return. And that is the problem for Virginia. Virginia has given up over 10 Offensive rebounds 10 times this season. Armando Baycott won the best the ACC has ever seen on the offensive glass. They've got to find a way to keep a body on him. He's come out of a tremendous game against Virginia Tech, 25 and 12. Rhodey gets a good clean look. That clangs away. Rebound spun to Miner, and that'll roll off to 10. Jordan Miner, everything that could have gone right until the shot. And Cadeau backs it away, Baycott up high this time. We'll see how dominating Baycott will be today. He's been in and out in that category this season. When he's been good, he's been very good. Ryan with a shot clock down to eight. R.J. Davis now, the player of the year candidate in the conference. He heaves a long one and can't hit. Strong defensive stand by Virginia on that possession, not only coming up with the stop, but also forcing North Carolina to use an entire shot clock to get what was a contested look. Down on the perimeter. Here's McNeely. Might be the key to the whole thing today for Virginia if he's on beyond that three-point line where he's 46%. The first one won't go. I agree with you, Obi. I believe McNeely will have a lot to say about this one. Virginia needs that three-point shooting to be successful. Baycott somehow got the pass to Ryan along the baseline. North Carolina three for six out of the gate. Virginia two for six. Strong drive, Cadeau all the way through. Nobody picked him up, but he lays it in. Elliott Cadeau only gets about eight points a game. But he's open because of so much attention being paid to Armando Baycott. Both defenders actually staying back with Baycott, not knowing whether to switch or to hedge that screen roll action. And caught in the middle, giving up an easy layup. Hubert Davis going to go to his bench and bring on a couple of guys in a moment. As Don is short, 
Rebound coming free, but there is a whistle. Another foul against Virginia. And the crowd doesn't like that very much, but a personal against the Cavaliers. 15-33 to go as we hit our first media break today. North Carolina with a five-point lead on the Cavs. The biggest problem with that last possession for Virginia, it results in a foul for Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn picked up two fouls in the first half against Virginia Tech on Monday night and had to spend a lot of time in that first half on the bench. Virginia can ill afford to have Ryan Dunn on the bench, especially when his matchup is Harrison Ingram, who may absolutely be the best X factor in the ACC. Now Virginia, of course, one of the great defensive teams in the country. Nothing new there. They're number three, 59 points a game against them. So very, very tough to score. Although Virginia Tech was able to get behind their defense to get some relatively easy baskets, which was a shocker in Blacksburg to see anybody do that against Virginia. And Tony Bennett told us plain as day, we got dominated on the interior by Virginia Tech. They're bigs did a number on us. Lynn Kidd had 14 points in the first half. Coming up with deflections, running the floor, dunking the basketball. Tyler Nickel had 13 points and six assists first Virginia. Tony Bennett had no answers for the Hokies in Blacksburg on Monday night, but it's been a long week for the Hoos to recover. And Tony Bennett said they have used that in the most constructive manner they possibly can to prepare for this game here, understanding the importance of this one. So a 9-4 lead here for North Carolina, and everybody in the building awaiting the result of Wake Forest and Duke in what was an absolute barn burner going down the stretch. Hunter Salas had a big, big game with 29 points. And Wake Forest stays undefeated at home on the season. So that game is over. Wake Forest has knocked off the Duke Blue Devils. And there's an injury at the very end of that game, so. It's a fascinating way for the day to unravel because if North Carolina wins this game, given the fact Duke has lost North Carolina, will have a couple games clear inside the ACC at the top of the league. And we welcome you to our ACC and ESPN blockbuster today from Charlottesville, Virginia. Number 10, North Carolina, taking on the Virginia Cavaliers. A sonic blockbuster and a dandy here today. North Carolina at 20 and 6, Virginia at 20 and 7. And for those just tuning in nationally, North Carolina has not won here in almost exactly 12 years, Corey Alexander. And OB, in those games, when you consider what has happened in this building for North Carolina. They have only averaged 54 points a game on this floor. Hubert Davis told us he's never won here as a coach. And that means during his time as an assistant for Roy Williams or as a head coach, he's never won in this building. And right now off to a great start for the Tar Heels. Led by R.J. Davis, 21 points a game. A look at their starting lineup. It's brought to you by Degree. Davis leading the ACC. Ingram, Baycott, and Ryan all get double figures. And that's going to be a turnover. But North Carolina needs their defense, Corey, to step up, really fire up again the way they were about a month ago. They absolutely do. During the month of January, there was a 10-game winning streak that started in the end of December where North Carolina was the best defensive team in the ACC, only allowing their opponents 36.5% field goals and less than 30 percent from beyond the three they have to get back to those winning ways to finish up this acc season strong jay grove slamming on the break shot clock down to five here does mcneely see it he's going to drive the baseline go for the reverse baycott was there to cover and virginia has missed five consecutive shots after a pretty quick start and when armando baycott has jay groves on his back, he should get the basketball. Missed opportunity for North Carolina on that possession. It's going to be difficult enough for Blake Buchanan to defend Baycott. But that's a possession where he should have gotten the basketball. Virginia just the one loss here on their home floor at John Paul Jones Arena. They're 14-1. and one. The only stumble against Pitt. Beekman will lean in but miss it. 
He hit his first couple of shots today. But Virginia, they're going to have to have a steady diet of that. Reese Beekman getting into the painted area, trying to score. He's going to have to be aggressive in putting points on the board for the Hoos. Seth Trimble up top for Davis, shooting 41% beyond the three-point line. He's had a tremendous season. At 36 against Wake, denied there as they converge on him and trigger the break to Beekman, who will scoop it up and cannot finish. With the ACC's leading shot blocker getting a stop on one end of the four. However, Virginia unable to finish it up on the other end. Ingram can't connect. Rebound pops free, but a foul here against Carolina. Virginia 0 for 7. As we give you a look at the standings now, up to the minute, given the Duke defeat. At the hands of Wake Forest, Hunter Salas, a big game today, leading the way for Wake. So there's Duke slipping behind a little bit. That's a half game at the moment, pending the outcome of this one. And Armando Baycott, very fortunate on that possession. Had a little, was a little too excited in his conversation with Jamie Lucky after picking up that foul. Jamie Lucky stayed poised and just stared down Baycott as Baycott walked away. Fortunate to not have a technical foul issue to him on that possession. On top of the foul, Groves gives it up here for Beekman. Groves on the spin, airborne, and a stop there by Seth Tremble. Seth Tremble, one of the better defenders in the ACC right now, coming in to guard Reese Beekman. However, got switched off on Jacob Groves. Did a great job on the post in that possession. North Carolina looking for win number 21, 64th time they've won 20. That's the most in the ACC. Duke is second with 58. Davis, shot clock to five. Trimble gets a look at it. He drives it, leans right in and stopped. Buchanan able to get it up there off the fingertips. Great job defensively by Buchanan denying that opportunity, recognizing the shot clock wearing down. Back to Buchanan, he stumbles, Baycott colliding with him. And that's going to be the second foul on Armando Baycott. 12.39 remaining in the first half as you see Blake Buchanan coming up with the block shot, keeping it in bounds and starting the offense for Virginia as Baycott picks up that second foul. Going to be interesting to see how Hubert Davis plays this. Does he keep Baycott on the bench for the remainder of this half or trust his 50-year senior to be able to come back and play spot minutes? To the bench he goes, 12.39 to go in the half. So Armando has scuffled with that throughout his career, the 6'11 grad out of Richmond, Virginia, hitting the bench with a couple. Tony Bennett matching Hubert Davis as R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott go out. Reese Beekman and Ryan Dunn also exit the game, so Tony Bennett going to take this time to get his guy some rest. McNeely can't get the shot. Buchanan will try and misfire. North Carolina, the top rebounding team in the ACC, also the top scoring team in OB, the league. Neither team has scored in over three minutes of this game. We went to our first media break with 15 and a half remaining at 9-4, and the score remains the same. Jalen Washington got it back. Can't hit it, though. So there's a lid on both baskets here in Charlottesville. North Carolina, again, has never lost this many games on an opponent's floor in a row ever. Around and out. And another rebound for the Heels. Well, coming into this game, you're expecting a low-scoring game. That's the way these games are played between Virginia and North Carolina. However, we've seen guys missing easy shots that you've expected to see them make throughout this game. Rose with the foul on the baseline, 11.37 left. As we take a timeout, ACC leading the way. More on that when we come back here. A very good basketball coaches leading great basketball programs. OBU and I did a game at North Carolina on Martin Luther King birthday weekend, and we had two black coaches, Hubert Davis and Red Archery from Syracuse. And the best thing about that entire thing, in my opinion, was the fact that you didn't even recognize the fact that it was two black coaches until I mentioned it to you. Indeed. And Kind of about time, you know? Yeah, and it really is about time, but you know, one of the things I've always loved about this conference is that we've always been at the forefront of diversity and inclusion. The ACC, by having 60% of its head coaches who just happen to be black, but the more that we don't talk about it and the more that it becomes commonplace, I think is where we're getting to where Martin Luther King's dream actually was. Here, here. North Carolina with a 12-4 lead. Armando Baycott, a little foul trouble. He just passed. 
13th place on the NCAA all-time rebounding list, passing Bill Russell. 16.07 in rebounds for Armando. North Carolina with the basketball, trying to build on this advantage against Virginia. Virginia has a very difficult time coming back on anybody when they get down by significant numbers. Ingram lost it. A sprawling attempt by Murray to keep it alive and will. It'll be Virginia ball. And guys diving on the floor, OB. This is an important game, of course, for both of these teams. And you see Tane Murray getting on the floor after Dante Harris comes up with the strip. But how about Harrison Ingram flying in, knocking out of bounds, not allowing Virginia to be able to take advantage of the live ball turnover. Those are the type of plays that Harrison Ingram has made for this team all season long. Maybe the most versatile player in the ACC and absolutely a huge X factor for North Carolina. Stanford transfer has been a grand slam for Hubert Davis. Long drive here for Virginia, and on that shot, they're not going to bust it. And an official timeout here by Jamie Lucky with five on the shot clock. Yes, and that, officials get together. That shot clock should reset. That basketball hit the rim. Jamie Lucky going to go over and talk to the team, talk to the scores table about resetting it to 20 seconds. A sonic blockbuster matchup here. So something's got to give an outstanding offensive team against a great defensive team. I think the difference this year in this matchup, because it, the game is going to be played in a pace where North Carolina will be fortunate to get into the 60s. The difference is North Carolina has been a better defensive team this season than they have in the past when they've come into this building. That is their advantage. Speakman with the give and an emphatic slam by Buchanan to finally end that drought. Virginia has that happen quite a bit. This was seven and 50 seconds. Seven minutes and 50 seconds. And OB, all three Virginia baskets have either been scored or assisted by Reese Beekman. Virginia cannot win if he has to do everything for them in this game. They've got to find someone else to help them on the offensive end. But Reese Beekman on the move, doing a great job. Once again, getting into the painted area, drawing the shot blocker in Washington, dumping it off as Blake Buchanan finishes strong with the two-hand flush. And Beekman, number one in the conference in assists per game. He's number two in steals. Brody, and he's going to be walking with it. A travel in the lane to give it back to North Carolina. Carolina playing for the first time in a week. It's their longest break since games around Christmas. Last Saturday, an impressive win over Virginia Tech. At 25 and 12 from Baycott, 17 rebounds from Engram, and there's the rejection high out of the sky by Groves. Can they turn it into points? Beekman on Davis, and Davis is going to pick up the personal. But back to the block shot. Virginia doing the job defensively. Great job by Jake Groves getting over, denying that opportunity. Elliot Cadeau with a burst of speed. Getting into the paint. And Dante Harris does a great job of tight roping the baseline. You see Groves with a huge block. But even as impressive as Harris tracks it down, he tight ropes the baseline to keep it in bounds. Rody from the corner, no. Let's okay. see if Davis starts to get rolling. He's been pretty quiet so far, Corey. Well, he's been quiet because he's got the ACC's reigning defensive player of the year guarding him. And it's tough to go and get buckets against Reese Beekman. But one of the things that Hubert Davis talked to us about was during this long week, they were able to get back to practicing on themselves. Sick pass. And by doing so, a lot of that has to do with their defensive effort. A very low scoring first half to this point. Coming up, we've got Texas and Kansas, followed by Texas A&M and Tennessee. A day and night chock full of college basketball here on ESPN and our family of networks. Now the team lights out. North Carolina 5 for 15. Virginia 3 for 18. And that will spin out by Ryan. To this point, Cormac Ryan's two three-pointers have been the difference maker thus far in this game with a six-point lead for North Carolina. Got a good look on that possession, unable to get it to go. Beekman on the dribble, leaning in. That's going to be blocked. 
Big defensive play by Jalen Washington. Cadell on the other end gets two, and he earned those. And we asked Hubert Davis, do you want to continue to push the tempo against this team? He said, absolutely. That's who we are. We're not going to get away from our characteristics, but they have to get good shots. That was a great shot by Cadell. Well, a pop around and out. Beekman's gone cold after a good start. Virginia has six points with eight minutes to go in the first half. And it's been all about Reese Beek with the two buckets in the painted area and driving and dishing as Cormac Klein lines up another three, unable to get it to go. But he's getting good looks against this Virginia defense. And one of the ways you have to beat Virginia, you're going to have to do it against this pack line from beyond the three-point arc. The bounce for Buchanan. Buchanan gets a look off the back of the iron. Virginia absolutely stone cold. And if you're just tuning in, Duke has already lost today. And a terrific game played by Wake Forest. That game came right down to the final couple of possessions. Shot clock down to eight. The catch made by Washington got it close up on a foul. As Buchanan went for the block and the big freshman fouled him. North Carolina wants to run. They want to push the pace, control the tempo. It's difficult to do against Virginia. However, Elliot Cadeau taking it from point A to point B as fast as you can. The finish over Groves for this tough. Virginia, they need a break to grab something to make them feel better. They're three for 21 from the field. 0 for 3 from 3. They have only one assist in the game to this point. And I realize that's the way Virginia often, not maybe not this badly shooting the ball, but they're not an offensive juggernaut. But this is tough for their fans to watch. Well, no, I, I wouldn't say that. For their fans, it's simply about winning. That's the most important part for the Virginia fans. They don't care if it's 40 to 39 as long as you win. They have learned to embrace the pace in Charlottesville. That is the motto here, regardless of the point. The, the scoring, it's always about having at least one more point than the opponent. The issue right now is the fact that North Carolina has 14 points, and they've been able to do this with R.J. Davis not able to get going, and Armando Baycott on the bench with those two fouls. Now, you didn't say it. You're an alum. I'll say it. <laughs> well, I mean, again, that, I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I hear you. There, there are many people here that love to watch this style of play, and to be able to beat North Carolina, which Virginia has done, eight consecutive times on this floor. No basket there. Cormac Ryan committing the foul. And also to be able to compete with the Duke Blue Devils of the world in this league, Tony Bennett's bought a program here that is a, that plays a certain way. And this is the way they have to play because you're not going to go and get the but McDonald's All-Americans. They, they don't want to play this way, Corey. They don't want to shoot three for 21. No, they, no, no, they don't no, want to do that. It's not about the shooting three for 21. It's about the pace of the game. Of course, everyone would love to make every shot they take. Well, they made one in the last 11 minutes. You've got to do better than that. I, I agree know. with that wholeheartedly, Obi, but what I'm saying is this is the pace of the game that Virginia wants to play. They're trying to find someone that gives them some type of punch offensively. But more importantly, they've held a team that averages 83 points a game to 15 points after playing 13 minutes. That is working for Virginia. That's the other side of the clover. I get that. They've played good defense and they're still in the game. But somebody's got to make a shot. You get six and a half minutes to go. You have six points in the first half. Cadeau gives it up. Getting it back. Shot clock. Getting inside two and switched in by Cormac Ryan. He's been the difference, OB. He's made three three-point field goals in this first half. Nine of North Carolina's 18 points. For Virginia, we're asking who's going to step up outside of Reese Beekman. Well, with R.J. Davis struggling, as well as Armando Baycott on the bench, Cormac Ryan's been that guy for Carolina. Beekman, tough shot. He'll draw the foul and be heading to the line where he makes 74%. Armando Baycott with a couple of quick fouls remaining there on the bench. Hasn't made a major difference. Cadeau with the foul there, and Beekman will shoot it. Now, college game day Sunday, 11 a.m. on ESPN from Blacksburg, Carolina, taking on number eight, Virginia Tech. Drop that 
one in. And that's a positive sign for Virginia, Obi. The last time they played on this floor, they were 1 of 11 from the free throw line. So Reese Beekman getting to the line, making the first two of the day for Virginia. Things are looking up. Now they got to find a way to get some points on the board offensively. Kick ball here. Yeah, they were 1 for 11, and they won the game, which is still staggering. Like, you shoot 1 for 11 from the line. You've done a lot of other things well if you're winning that game. And OB, the score of the game when they beat a Wake Forest team that just beat North Carolina on their home floor was 49 to 47. So not only did you win the game, you beat a very good team, which now should be cemented as an NCAA tournament team. They're trying to give it up on the bounce, and out it goes, so they turn it over. Virginia locking up defensively, and it'll be three turnovers now for North Carolina. You go back and you see Elliot Cadeau, Elijah Gertrude, both first-year players from the New Jersey area on the floor right now. These guys have seen each other a lot over their careers in high school and now having an opportunity to play against each other in the ACC. He's been on the move again. Boy, did everything he wanted to do, just couldn't finish it. as Ingram went down and a foul here and that'll go against Dunn that's, that's gonna be, be number two yeah be the second foul on Ryan Dunn now Tony Bennett gonna have to go without one of the ACC's top defenders trying to contend with Harrison Ingram on the intent on the inside Jacob Groves gonna come back into the game as Jordan Miner also steps back in Virginia been able to buy minutes with Armando Baycott in his second foul on the bench. And Tony Bennett will take a timeout. So we'll take the break, too. Virginia trying to break into double figures with 5.05 to go in a half. See in steals, the top two candidates, in my opinion, for ACC Defensive Player of the Year this year. And that's where Virginia hangs its hat. But they're going to have to find a way to put some points on the board here. Ryan with a clean look, switches that in from three-point land. Cormac Ryan, who has had success on this floor during his time with Notre Dame. And now you're talking about a sixth year who is showing up and showing his experience. 12 points for Cormac Ryan out of the 21 for North Carolina. Rose takes a pop there. And a foul on the youngster Cadeau hit him for his second foul. And uh, Hubert Davis will bring in Paxson Wojcik, a 6'5 grad who can hit a 3-2. Cormac Ryan, by the way, with 12 points. Virginia's a team with eight. OB, this is where Virginia's going to have to find some way to get Jacob Grove some looks beyond the three-point line. Of course, North Carolina knows that. And they're not going to give him anything easy. But Jacob Groves is the guy, in my opinion, who has to be that guy that ignites his offense for Virginia. We were here to watch him make five three-pointers in the first half and then go to Clemson and knock down three three-pointers in the first half in two big games for Virginia. Rolling inside, Washington lost control of it. Carolina's kicked it over four times. The Cavaliers rarely do that, just about eight turnovers per game. McNeely stopped at the foul line. And bad spacing right there. Groves running right into McNeely. Gertrude down the lane. No. Would have had a number of layups and pretty good looks that have not gone down. Ingram. Here's Davis, and he'll draw the foul with 3.35 to go. They're howling here because they thought there was a foul on the other end. But Virginia with one field goal in about 14 minutes of point in this game. He is now 0 for 4. Came in leading the ACC at 21 points a game. So we come up on 3.20 to go here in the first half. OB, North Carolina is a quarter of a way to their average. They average over 82 points per game. That shows you how good defensively Virginia is. With Armando Baycott only two points in foul trouble, and R.J. Davis, who averages 21.3, scoreless. The problem is, Cormac Ryan has been a difference maker as Jordan Miner is able to come up with the second chance points for Virginia. A, a gritty bucket they desperately needed. 
Baycott, seven minutes, two fouls. Ryan Dunn, nine minutes, and a couple of fouls, too. And poked out of bounds by Virginia and Beekman. And Tony Bennett will get the big fella Buchanan back in. So Virginia finally gets to double figures. Off the top of your head, what did you say in the Tony Bennett era, the lowest points in a half were for Virginia? I don't even have to go top of the head, OB. I know these by, by memory. It was in the first half, it was 15 points versus Iowa State. And in the second half, it was 15 versus Duke. So that is the lowest in the Tony Bennett era of points and a half. And right now, Virginia with 10 points flirting with breaking that record here today. Well, they just went another seven minutes without a field goal. 2.34 to go before the break. And Miner will head to the line. And this is a scuffle for him, 57% for the grad out of Kingston, Massachusetts. Transfer from Merrimack. And it looked really good on that first one. So as bad as things have gone for Virginia, it's only 21 to 11. They're still very much in it. If they can find some people, as Seth said, who can make shots. And but Tony Bennett's waiting on that. But it's important to do it here at the end of this first half, in the last two and a half minutes, in order to have that momentum going into the halftime locker room. I do believe Virginia will have something different offensively in the second half, but they need to make a run here. Beekman in transition, McNeely off the front of the iron. Big rebound by Gertrude. There's gonna be a foul there against North Carolina. On the hip. That was Davis, I believe. And how about Elijah Gertrude, the best athlete on this Virginia team, skying high for the offensive rebound. And now an opportunity to put points on the board for Virginia. And once again, OB, if Gertrude's able to make both these free throws, now we're talking about a seven-point game. Still 2-12 remaining. So as poorly as things have gone offensively for Virginia, it's simply about staying in contact because this is a Virginia team that struggles when they get down big trying to get back in the game. And as mentioned, this place has been an absolute house of horrors for North Carolina going back to 2012. That's the last time they won here, February 25 of 12. So one day shy of exactly 12 years. And the officials going to, Jamie Lucky going to go over and make sure that that was R.J. Davis because that's his second foul. And so Armando Baycott already on the bench with the two fouls. Jamie Lucky wants to be certain that it was R.J. Davis, that they got the right person that they call for that foul. This already has the feeling of a bizarre finish, doesn't it? I mean, it's just setting us up. And Obi, you and I are both movie <laughs> critics. It's a movie that starts off slow. It's going to have a major climax at the end. You're talking about a blockbuster. It's a sonic blockbuster, OB. It's it going to be a thriller. It's a sonic blockbuster. 2-12 left in the half. This is what they're taking a look at. Okonkwo is going to pick up the personal for North Carolina. Gertrude will head to the line. Virginia did have their 23-game home winning streak come to an end when they fell to Pitt here on February 13. They will knock down number one. And they continue to creep back in this thing from the foul line. Which is a, a not a reliable source for the Hoos thus far this year, only shooting 64% from the free throw line on the season. The worst in the ACC. However, now four straight free throws made to make this a seven-point game as the crowd here at JPJ starts to get even more lively. Ryan catches, fires, got it. Oh, he's been the answer, OB, as he shushes the crowd. Cormac Ryan now with his fifth three-point field goal in this first half. And immediately put that index finger up to the lips. 
to quiet the crowd. Big, big half for him. Came in averaging 11 points a game. McNeely wants to get closer on the bounce. Miner very strong under there. Washington with the block. Did a good job staying home defensively. Well, yeah, give North Carolina a lot of credit. Withers and Washington both just walling up on the interior, not allowing Jordan Miner to be able to get a good shot off. And that'll go the other way. That'll be against North Carolina. And that, that is going to be on R.J. Davis. So that's going to be his second foul. Hubert Davis going to most likely get a sub for R.J. here with 126 remaining. And Hubert is not happy at all on the sideline right now. Yep, he's lost his top score for the last 126 of the half. And he hasn't had Baycott for the last 12-39 of this first half. However, Cormac Ryan has had himself a shooting clinic here. Beekman kicks. Groves out top. Here's Gertrude again. Yeah, that's 36 points a game on the bench right now here for North Carolina. Poked away by Ingram with the depths. And the lay that up and in and a whistle as well. But I made a beautiful move to the basket. He held the ball out high to his right and got hit and made it anyway. But Harrison Ingram does it all, getting out into the passing lane, creates the contact with Elijah Gertrude and finishes it off. Opportunity for the and one as Harrison Ingram steps up and makes a huge play to now get the lead back to 12. In and out. 26-14, under a minute to go. Gertrude to attack. And a whistle. Washington going up high. Went for another block, 53.2 to go in the half. How about the freshman? Elijah Gertrude getting it done. And a guy that hasn't played many minutes as of late, but Tony Bennett trying to get some type of energy injected into this building, goes to the first year in Gertrude, and he has responded. The tough offensive rebound, making free throws, and now the opportunity to get back to the free throw line to get it back to 10. Well, he has been a jolt of energy here. This is on the first foul shot, but he has given Tony Bennett a nice little jolt of life. He absolutely has done that. And you're talking about the best athlete on this Virginia roster. And again, he's going to be very good in this Virginia uniform. It's going to take time from a young man who tore his ACL to begin his senior season of high school. So he's just getting back into playing for him. And Mr. Pair there, though. Triple. Up top, Withers with the swing. Downstairs, Washington double up. Shot clock to seven. Knocked away by Beekman. And Beekman will slam it. Virginia really baiting North Carolina into that turnover. That's what Reese Beekman does best. The one of the reasons why he leads the ACC in steals and is one of the best defensive players for Cormac Ryan. Coming on the road, being that third score for North Carolina with Armando Baycott in foul trouble. R.J. Davis now sitting with those two fouls. And O.B. had opportunity to eat breakfast this morning with both Mike and Rosemary Ryan. They made the trip down from New York to see their son, and he has rewarded them for coming to watch him play. Well, he sure has. He's season high five threes for him, 15 points. His career high is six. He's almost gotten that and a half. Carolina holding for the final shot before the break. Cadeau gives it up. Why not Ryan again at this time? The follow by Davis at the horn won't drop. He had a tough first 20 minutes. Virginia certainly did, but 36. Different here at JPJ, but they're going to have to find a way to get quality looks on this offensive end. Brody gives it up. McNeely hoists it. Can't hit it. And they remain. With a big goose egg in the three-point column, they're 0 for 7. But a tough shot with only three seconds remaining on the shot clock for Isaac McNeely. And we talked about North Carolina defensively. They have shown up in a major way on the defensive end of the floor this afternoon. Baycott and Davis back in there to open up the second half for Hubert Davis. Hubert, by the way, is 50 and 5.
when North Carolina has the lead at halftime. But of course, this place has been a completely different story for North Carolina. Charlottesville with the eight straight losses, trying to snap that here. Ryan again. Not this time. Virginia shooting a little under 17% in the first half and a rare turnover for the Cavaliers, and that's three today. And just miscommunication. Ryan Dunn slashing to the basket. Reese, Dun Reese Beekman expecting him to be outside the three-point line as the two have a conversation going back down the floor. But look at that number. Lost eight straight road games at UVA. The last win in 2012. And as you mentioned, there's been some great North Carolina teams that have come in and lost in this building. Entry downstairs for Baycott. Very difficult angle. Miner stayed with him right there on his hip. Great job standing his ground. Jordan Miner, who's made a difference for this Virginia team, anchoring the interior. Oftentimes, they don't have to double team when he's in the game. Beekman trying to spin on R.J. Davis. Got in close and knocked it down. And that's by design. Reese Beekman taking advantage of his size once again. And also, remember, R.J. Davis playing with those two fouls. Can't afford to pick up another one. So by design, Tony Bennett sending Reese Beekman into the post. Beekman's got three or four inches on R.J. Cadeau to drive it, and it rolls off the 10. Miner collecting it on the baseline. He's had some really nice moments in this game. He absolutely had a great moment there, keeping Armando Baycott, one of the best offensive rebounders in ACC history, off the glass, keeping him from getting a second chance points. Miner spinning left and lays it in. One of the best moves of the day by a Cavalier. And a 4 0 run to start this half for Virginia. This environment feels different. North Carolina's missed six consecutive shots going back to the first half. They got to get this man going. Davis will draw the foul. And R.J. Davis headed to the line. The one area where people have been able to exploit North Carolina is they start a smaller backcourt with R.J. Davis and Elliott Cadeau. Reese Beekman, who has about a four-inch advantage height-wise over R.J. Davis, just gets to a spot and uses athleticism to raise over top for the bucket. Miner's second foul. Davis a 90% foul shooter. He's also on pace to set the Carolina record for most threes in a season, held by Justin Jackson in 2016-17. Today it's all about gaining ground on Duke. The Duke Blue Devils fell in Wake Forest earlier today in a dandy of a game. Hunter Salas with 29 for the Demon Deacons. And you see the switch now defensively. R.J. Davis guarding Isaac McNeely. Cormac Ryan taking on the challenge of guarding Reese Beekman. They don't want to put R.J. in that position, but now they get the switch. Reese has to go right back into the post. Beekman. Nifty bounce feed and laid in by Miner. That's the pass of the day. That has to be the recipe for Tony Bennett. Give the basketball to Reese Beekman and allow him to go make a play. This is a game where he's going to have to do a lot for Virginia. Baycott doubled again. That's every time he touches it. Ryan straight on. Yes, another triple. But the mistake is the short closeout by Andrew Rohde. You understand Cormac Ryan has already made five three-point field goals. You don't close out short. You run him off the three-point line. He's not had a great year from three-point distance, 32%, but he's having a great day. And he's had a handful of really nice ones at 18 against Villanova, 20 against Kentucky. That'll roll off the iron. And uh, here come the Tar Heels trying to build on a 31-22 advantage on the road where they've played well. They're 6-2 and two in the conference. Wins at Pitt, Clemson, NC State, Boston College, FSU, and Miami. Ryan again. And time in and out. Tapped out and out completely by Baycott. So the scoring picking up here. Thank goodness for that. Here in the second day, when you consider what has happened with R.J. Davis having to go up against the best on ball defender in the ACC and one of maybe the top two or three in the country and Reese Beekman. But R.J. Davis is not just a scorer. He does things to help his team win, and he's going to have to continue to do that to get a win here on the road. Missed all six. Rody on target for a three-pointer. And 
Andrew Rohde will stick it. They finally hit their first three-pointer. They had been 0 for 7. And only made six three-point field goals in the last two games combined for Virginia. So a welcome sight to see Rohde knock one down. Davis on the drive, hopping into the lane, and he'll go to the line. These are shots that typically RJ would finish a high number of and be going to the line for a three-point play. It just hasn't developed that way today. But you also consider, we talk about Reese Beekman and his steals. Reese Beekman also averages over a block per game. So from the guard position, RJ playing probably against probably the better shot blockers that you're going to see as an on-ball defender. 32 to 25. NBA coming your way on primetime Saturday. Jalen Brunson and the Knicks in Boston taking on Jason Tatum and the Celtics who lead the East coverage tipping off with NBA countdown at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. OB, if I told you that when Jalen Brunson was in the seventh grade, he was actually here working out on this court. His dad, Rick, was an assistant coach for Dave Lato back in the day. So Jalen Brunson's Charlottesville ties run very strong. So much so that Tony Bennett actually thought they had a chance to get him when he was coming out of high school. Line, another rebound on the stick back. He's been a presence. He has 10 points. He came in averaging four points a game. And that was one of the areas where Hubert Davis talked to us about. They haven't been great securing defensive rebounds for a team that leads the ACC in rebounding. Jordan Miner exploiting that on the Tar Heels as of late. Uh, Virginia barely got to 16 points at halftime, but now they have closed the gap to six. It is Davis in and out, just not his day. He still hasn't hit a shot. Hobie, it's a six-point game right now. Big possession for Virginia. Done on the base side. That's a block by Baycott. Boy, did he time that perfectly. Yeah, underrated part of his game. We talk about the rebounding and the scoring. He's been a guy that's defended the rim very well. He threw that off minor on the baseline, so it's going to be North Carolina ball. 33 to 27. But Jordan Miner getting the job done on the offensive glass, coming up with the offensive rebound and finishing it. And right now, the crowd looking at all these beautiful big screens as Armando Baycott attempted to throw the basketball off of Jordan Miner. But I believe what the crowd saw was the ball hitting Baycott on the way out. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Here's trouble. To Davis. Under 14 to play. Who would have thought this game would be this close? The way Virginia shot the ball, 5 for 30 at one point. Davis finally on the board with a three-pointer. Another streak on the line, OB, is the fact that R.J. Davis has made multiple three-pointers in 20 consecutive games. Jamie Lucky with another timeout here. An official stoppage of play. And Tony Bennett, who received a technical foul two games ago. Yeah, bench warning here. Oh, but they got the bench warning. But however, Baycott never threw that basketball off of Miner. It just went off his hands out of bounds. And think about that play. R.J. Davis knocks down a three on that possession. So now a nine-point game in comparison to six with Virginia with the basketball. And yeah, Tony got his first technical since 2010 this year. The lean in by Beekman and cleaned up by Baycott. It was past Bill Russell on the all-time college rebounding list. Baycott going in strong. Not there, and a foul will go against Virginia on the interior. And a crowd howling again here. Now they believe strongly a call has gone against them. Dunn will pick up his third foul for Virginia. This is a big miss as maybe the defensive player of the year in the conference goes to the bench. We shall see, 13 minutes to go. And dropped in by Withers, and he heads to the bench. And Ryan Dunn and Jalen Withers both going for the basketball. That's a 50-50 ball. I understand exactly why the crowd is upset about that yeah, one. A 50-50 ball, that's no one's possession. I'm not sure why Ron Dunn got called for that one. Not much there. 
13 minutes to play. Wake Forest beating Duke earlier this afternoon. Brody putting the head down and kicks to Groves, who barely made the catch in the corner. Andrew Rohde again, shot clock down to six. Here's Beekman to drive into the blue shirts. Long one, Rohde. No. That missed ugly, and it never got to the rim. So a shot clock violation. OB. We take a look at the standings in the ACC. This is coming into our game now, given the result of Wake's win over Duke. North Carolina, the top dog at the moment by half a game, and there's Virginia in third place at 11 5. OB, at this point in the game for Virginia, you've got to understand the climate. Things have not gone your way, but however, the crowd is after these officials. You have to find a way to attack the basket, force the officials to make the call for you in comparison to shooting jump shots and bailing the officials out to where they don't have to make that. North Carolina continues to attack the basket. They lead the ACC with 18 made free throws a game. The Gillies fall away, not their winners snatching a rebound. Crowds are always terrific here at John Paul Jones Arena. They've been a big reason why Virginia has been so darn good. Not just against North Carolina, against everybody for a long time. 14 and one here this year. Baycott is stepping on the line, and he will turn that over. So we will take the break. 11.51 left here in Charlottesville, North Carolina. On top of yeah, I'm not a big subscriber to Joey Brackets. I subscribe to Jimmy Brackets, which would be Jim Beheim. And congratulations <laughs> to my guy having Jim Beheim day at Syracuse earlier. And Coach Beheim and I both believe that Pittsburgh also is in that mix, and they will be the sixth team from the ACC that will be in the NCAA tournament with an outside chance of the Orange, who got a big win today at home. Nice home win. Beekman fouled before the shot. Reese Beekman, the 6'3 senior from Milwaukee. And Obi, we had a chance. We talked with Hubert Davis about it earlier today. The value or devaluation of the ACC by the national pundits, it's really just gone too far. However, one thing is for certain, we all within this league recognize how good of a league it is, and the coaches absolutely play a part in that. Just flat better than the national narrative as Harris steps back and knocks one down. Dante Harris, maybe he could be an answer today for Virginia, a guy who transferred from Georgetown, missed about 10 games this year with an ankle injury. He can play offense. And he can be a playmaker also, so it doesn't all fall on the shoulders of Reese Beekman to go out and make every play for Virginia. Cormac Ryan, he's been the story today for North Carolina. He's hit his highest number of threes this season. Davis on the move. R.J. Davis working hard, tough on an angle there, and Baycott with the rebound in the second effort, and he has seven for the day. And that's where Armando Baycott is at his best, getting second-chance opportunities for his team. He and Jordan Minor have battled in that area here this afternoon. Baycott slams it in. They get it to the big fella, and Armando does the rest, the 6'11 grad to make it 42 to 29. Just a little late on the rotation by Elijah Gertrude getting over there. That could have easily been a steal had it been anticipated earlier. Groves wants to launch. Boy, got a really good look and it kicked out. And a whistle in the lane there with 10 08 left. And then back to the slam by Baycott. Armando Baycott, who came up with the offensive rebound earlier, puts back two second chance points on this one off a nice find from R.J. Davis. Now Baycott just picked up his third. So three fouls on Armando. He just came up with his fifth consecutive double-double last weekend when he went for 25 and 12 against Virginia Tech. Yeah, Armando has 26, 20 and 10 games throughout his career as he comes up with another rebound none bigger than the 29 point 22 re rebound effort he had against Virginia a couple of seasons ago but he has not been able to get going on this building here where he considered he would be coming to school Davis just been stone cold today one for 10 shooting it Beekman a drive through and they're gonna wave it off no basket there it's not going to be the popular call here, but it's actually the right call. When you see the play, Elliot Cadeau tries to wrap Reese Beekman up, 
earlier in the play. There's the foul. As you go, uh, I don't know, OB. That's a little closer than I thought it was. <laughs> that, I, I may say that's an and one on that one. From this angle earlier, that looked as though it was, but looking at it from under the basket, that possibly should have been an and one. Third on Cano, Ryan with the block. Second try here, Beekman. No. Ingram with the rebound. Man, is he had some monster rebounding games. At 19 against NC State, 17 against FSU. And averaging nine rebounds a game. RJ Davis. And it'll be slapped away by Virginia. So North Carolina will retain possession under nine minutes to play. It has been physical down low when you start talking about Jordan Miner, Armando Baycott, two strong guys going at it. And they have been mixing it up all day long. Baycott, who missed the majority of the first half with those two fouls, has made his presence felt here in the second half. Shot clock to three. Hubert Davis pointed at that and batted away from RJ. Up ahead, Harris. Harris feeding Gertrude and a block. And a foul on the play. Uh, Cormac Ryan and that is a great foul by Cormac Ryan because Elijah Gertrude can flat out fly He was about to take off and finish that one strong he Was about to rise up for a flying Gertrude Texas and Kansas coming your way and that'll be followed by Texas A&M and Tennessee <laughs> You can't say flying Gertrude and then go read a promo while I'm laughing. I tried. <laughs> you got to give me a time to get my laughter out on that one before you go to the promo. At the line for two and six, number one. And he's had a presence in this game, no question. Gertrude has really given Virginia good minutes off the bench and the energy that he's been able to establish getting on the floor. It takes a lot for Tony Bennett to trust you as a first year. But he's starting to gain some, and this will go a long way with him and Elijah Gertrude. So Virginia's stuck at 30 points. They managed to score only 41 on Monday at Virginia Tech, but really ran them off the floor in Blacksburg. Bryant lost the handle, out it rolls, and back over to Virginia. And the great job defensively by Gertrude, forcing the turnover on that possession. First and foremost, running Cormac Ryan off the three-point line and forcing him to put the basketball on the floor, which is not his strong suit, and getting possession back for Virginia. Ryan on McNeely, who's had a rough shooting game. And this time it'll rattle home on a nice spin. The first field goal for IMAC going to the turnaround jumper and give North Carolina a lot of credit for the job they've done defensively on McNeely. And a whistle here against Virginia. McNeely had been 0 for 6. Groves with the foul. And another moment here, North Carolina trying to win on this floor for the first time in 12 years. And they lead Virginia 42 to 32 with the ball. OB. ACC tournament in Washington, D.C. The last time it was in D.C. in 2016, it was these two teams on the floor at the end of it. And North Carolina was able to win that ACC tournament, went on to the Final Four that season. But a strong contingent of Virginia fans, both in the mix on that one, as Tony Bennett not happy with this call. Yeah, that's going to go against McNeely. As he tied up with the freshman Cadeau. Tony's been hot today. Wow. And McNeely number two. Cadeau got away with one on that one, OB. It looks as though Cadeau grabbed McNeely's arm, pulling them both down and fooling the officials into calling that an offensive foul on McNeely. Baycott for Davis. Davis a runner. Just nothing dropping for him. But a second chance opportunity. Harrison Ingram coming up 
with the offensive rebound. Now the fifth offensive rebound for North Carolina, who come into the game leading the ACC, averaging over 12 a game. Yeah, well, you two great offensive rebounders, Baycott and Ingram. Davis, one for 11 shooting, launches again. Right in front of the shot clock, Baycott another offensive board. And this has been the struggle for Virginia throughout this season. One of the things has been an Achilles heel for the Hoos, giving up second chance points. Cadeau, Baycott tried to follow, and he'll draw the foul with 6.35 to go. Going back to what Tony Bennett was upset about. Well, watch, watch Elliot Cadeau grab the arm of Isaac McNeely. Tough to see from that angle. And Tony is trying to show Jamie Lucky exactly what I looked at to see it, where Cadeau originally pulled McNeely into him and fooled the officials into calling that an offensive foul, taking away a possession for Virginia on the offensive end of the floor, where it's been difficult enough to score so they can't afford turnovers. They both coaches over the course of a game have gripes. He has a couple. Yeah, he does have a couple in this game. However, one of the things that, as you see, watch Elliot Cadeau grabbing the, if one has his hand wrapped around McNeely and then grabs his shoulder, pulls it to him. Cadeau got away with one on that one because that would have been the fourth foul on Elliot Cadeau. Indeed. Beekman trying to bring the Who's back here. Hands off for Dunn and a collision. That'll be a blocking foul. Against Carolina, 6-16 to go, but Virginia, for an important stretch of the game here, unable to chip away at this lead, not an overwhelming lead, but can't seem to draw any closer. Well, and that's one of the areas where Virginia can use some production from Ryan Dunn, who gets the easy bucket inside the zone, as his big brother, Justin, a major league baseball pitcher, of course, OB all the, in your area, is in attendance with his father, Ed, mom, Donna here this evening, made the trip down to watch Ryan play. Cross court, Cadeau with a catch, big open look, but no. And now Dunn coming up with a big rebound. Virginia could absolutely use his energy here in this last stretch. Gertrude has been the energizer bunny at times today. It'll be knocked out of play, and Virginia will retain. And Cormac Ryan coming back on now, replacing Trimble for North Carolina. Ryan, who has 18 points. And six out of 11 from three. They made one, only one three here in this second half. Virginia's done a better job defensively staying connected. Beekman, oh, got everything he wanted except the basket, the follow-up by Miner. But there's that guy again, Jordan Miner, has been spectacular for Virginia on the offensive glass. And Miner now in double figures with 12 points to go along with his nine rebounds. Well, this big crowd stepping right back in it again, trying to make a difference. Who will respond for North Carolina? Ingram. Back for the freshman. Shot clock winding down. A misfire. Beekman playing with a lot of quickness and energy. Knocked away and stolen away by Davis. On the turnover, man, Beekman will foul him way before the shot. And just a rare turnover by Reese Beekman. One of the most sure-handed players in the ACC. Just mishandling the basketball. Coming down and really trying to direct traffic. Trying to talk to Isaac McNeely about what they wanted and just raise the basketball up high enough for R.J. Davis to take it away from him. And it's been that type of stretch for Tony Bennett and his team as of late on the offensive end. Davis with eight points now. And one of his quietest days of the season by far. On the road here in Charlottesville, but at the line, he's as close to automatic as you get. Yeah, 90 percent right now. He will be the all-time leading free throw percentage leader in University of North Carolina history. And you're talking about some great players coming through. And of course, as we talk about that, kiss of death. Yep. <laughs> as your announcer, Jinx for you, 446 to go. And 45-36 North Carolina. But he has been a spectacular foul shooter. 
right ahead of my brother, Shaman Williams. And RJ shooting at 90% this season. Most likely will finish the year at number one, but has the opportunity to come back and play another year as his class is the last class that will have the COVID year. Gertrude's going to be fouled. Ingram went up the block. As Virginia got it inside that paint with four and a half showing. Elijah Gertrude has been great with his cutting, his movement away from the basketball, putting himself in position to get fouled and get to the free throw line throughout this game. Ingram's first. Gertrude's been spending a lot of time at the line. And he makes 70%. Tomorrow, Elizabeth Kitley and number eight Virginia Tech will be hosting North Carolina at 2 o'clock Eastern on ECC Network. The college game day crew will tip it off from Blacksburg at 11 a.m. on ESPN. The Castle Guard is going to be rocking as my brother, cousin Kenny Brooks, and the Hokies take on Deja Kelly and the Tar Heels in there, one of the loudest arenas in college basketball, not just the ACC. Liz Kitley, a great, great player. What a spectacular career. Two-time ACC Player of the Year and could possibly win it a third, but her biggest competition is Georgia Amor, the point guard for the Hokies. Another miss there by Davis. 45-37. Beekman negotiating again. Over the top minor. No! He hasn't missed many of those today. Yeah, that's a bucket that you need to be able to finish. Especially trying to come back. And yet, Virginia hanging around as they so often do. But now four on five. Baycott slams. That's what happens when you gamble for the steal and you don't get it. You put your defense in a tough spot. Miner, who went after the steal and didn't get it when he falls down. Now you're playing five on four offensively. Whistle with 317 to go and a timeout. Timeout on the floor and a 10-point game. Jordan Miner thought he had the steal, but when you go for it and you don't get it as he goes down, now it's a 5-1-4 advantage for North Carolina. The easy finish from Armando Baycott. Nothing away from Armando Baycott for getting into this great company. However, I have to mention that Tim Duncan and Ralph Sampson both did it in four years. That's true. This is year five for Armando Baycott, so he's had many more opportunities to do it. I believe this is now his 159th game in a North Carolina Tar Heel uniform, which is still a tremendous accomplishment because over 50% of his games throughout his career, he's had a double-double, but there's still an asterisk beside it. Virginia trying to creep a little bit closer and with three pointers like that for McNeely, they can. So it's a seven point game. Great execution out of the timeout by Tony Bennett's group to make it a seven point game and getting Isaac McNeely going. They're going to need his shooting prowess down the stretch here to get a win. They've made only two out of 13 beyond that line. Davis, one for 14 today. Ingram keeps it alive. And a second chance here for Carolina. It's been a big difference in the game. The offensive rebounding for the Tar Heels has all season. And you talked about how they have two legitimate threats as far as offensive rebounders and Baycott and Harrison Ingram on the inside. Both of them come up with big plays, but now Virginia does the job defensively and gets their 24 shot clock violation of the season. 24. After we go final. Ken, thank you very much. This one a grinder, a rock fight, however you want to describe it. Low scoring game, 47 to 40. But Virginia has the ball, trying to hang on to it here to reach in by Ingram and commits the foul with 2.13 to go. Look at T. Swizzy. Taylor is everywhere, OB. We saw her all over the NFL playoffs, the Super Bowl, and now she's made her way. Really? Is she to dating the... anybody of note? No, 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 I mean, yeah, well, not here. <laughs> <laughs> not, definitely not here. McNeely at the line, 88%. Sophomore from West Virginia makes number one. And Virginia still very much in the game, despite shooting 28% for the contest. But the reason they are is because they've held a team that averages 83 points per game to 47. 
And right now, within striking distance at five, can the defense come up with another huge stop for Virginia to try to get them an opportunity to make it a one-possession game? Well, Carolina fans asking, where is R.J. Davis? Baycott has shown up. Block! Done with a rejection. The ACC's top man, McNeely in transition. He'll launch it. And well short and a whistle in the paint. But Jordan Miner going after another offensive rebound. Gets the foul. So he has an opportunity to get to the free throw line on the one and one. And how about the ACC's leading shot blocker, Ryan Dunn, taking on Armando Baycott at the rim. And now Dunn, the gimme, Miner with an opportunity to make this a one possession game if he can take care of, take care of business here at the line. And he misses the front end. Uh, it's a struggle for him at the line. Under 60 percent. Well, it's a struggle for Virginia at the line. And yeah. you and I, on Monday, looked at the free throw shooting numbers, and you told me plain as day, this is going to hurt Virginia in a close game at some point. Defensively, by Reese Beekman, he's just sealed up his second straight ACC Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, he's been great with big stops. And all over Davis. The open man is Ingram on the feed, and he will lay it off the window. But so much attention being paid to the shooters coming off of screens. You forgot about Harrison Ingram under the basket for the easy bucket. Big with Davis right with him. Coming up on one minute to go. And another whistle and a timeout. Timeout, Virginia. One minute, 14 seconds to play in Charlottesville. And North Carolina, the number 10 team in the country, looking to hang on and pick up win number 21. More importantly, overall, the 13th win in the conference. And that will give them two games of separation from the Duke Blue Devils who lost to Wake Forest. Let's check in with the studio. And Dave, we want to let you know we've got Big 12 action in the on-deck circle. Dylan DeSue in Texas, an eight seed to start the day, according to Joey Brackett's resume opportunity in the fog. That game coming your way after we finish up in Charlottesville. 49-42. And a minute, 14 seconds to go. I mentioned this earlier, North Carolina playing for the first time in a week, their longest break between games since Christmas time. Avery Davis telling us it was great to have all of that practice time, not worrying about a game midweek. Carolina beginning of the day tied with Duke for first place with five to play. Nine to get off a shot. Gertrude sinks it. Big buckets. You can see the confidence that Tony Bennett has grown in Elijah Gertrude in this game alone, having him on the floor here at crunch time. Stop the clock here with a foul and 53.6 to go. But a good foul to send Harrison Ingram to the free throw line in comparison to sending R.J. Davis there, who's normally the guy. He and Cormac Ryan, who shoots 87%, with Davis over 90. Those are normally the guys shooting the basketball from the free throw line down the stretch. Harrison Ingram just 57% as opposed to 90% for R.J. Davis at the foul line. But he will hit number one. Important free throw. That makes a two-possession game still with you if two three-pointers. This is an important free throw to try to stretch it out to three possessions for Ingram. And that'll roll off. Baycott wins the battle. And they get it back. And a reach around foul by Beekman. So 45.8 to go, and it'll be Davis again to shoot. Armando Baycott has not had a strong offensive game. However, he has done what he does best. North Carolina's all-time leading rebounder, which he accomplished in four seasons, comes up with a huge Offensive rebound off of a missed free throw that sends the ACC's, well, one of the ACC's best free throw shooters, Joe Girard, actually number one, R.J. Davis, two. Another one coming for R.J. Davis. Baycott, by the way, now with 90 games with 10 or more rebounds in his decorated career for North Carolina. Come together. Come together. 
His second free throw coming. That time he makes the pair. And North Carolina will take the timeout, leading 52 to 44. So another break here in Charlottesville. Ron Sanchez, associate head coach of University of Virginia. Sanchez went to watch him in the eighth grade and texted me and said, this kid is going to be really good. Virginia offered him as a ninth grader, but he chose Chapel Hill, and it's been a great decision for Armand. Meekman looked for a blow by. It won't drop for him. And a big miss and another foul to stop the clock, 34.9. North Carolina trying to salt this game away at the free throw line today. So one more look at Bracketology. Joey Brackets earlier today putting Wake Forest in after that huge win against the Duke Blue Devils. Last four in along with Virginia Clemson, Duke, and North Carolina in the ACC. Who this, might join them? That'll be fascinating. Th this is not a bad loss for Virginia. Again, I mean, North Carolina right now is six and two on the road in the ACC. Strong possibility they win this when they go to seven and two on the road. But this is one of the best teams in the country, and they proved that today because they can win ugly. This was not a high-scoring game for them, and Virginia wanted to make this game ugly. That's the way that they compete with North Carolina. The reason why they have an eight-game winning streak on this floor against the Tar Heels. But Virginia offensively just could not get it going. And, you know, to your point, as Gertrude flies in and can't connect, North Carolina has shot a season-low 32%, and they're going to walk out of here with a victory. Virginia has done their job in the eight-game winning streak on this floor. Virginia has surrendered 54 points a game to North Carolina. You look at it, it's 54 points. They did their job defensively. They just could not get enough offense out of this group. And they finally snapped that losing skid here at Virginia. North Carolina wins it 54-44 to over the Cavaliers. Their first win 